Why do we use n minus 1 in the calculation of variance? If you have reached this video or this far, then you might already know that there are differences between the formulae for either standard deviation or variance between that of a sample and that of a population. While there is a lot of literature and information about why do we have n minus 1 with the variance calculation for samples in the denominator and not in the population with some empirical experiments that I want to perform and show you why using n minus 1 is practically useful. Just to get started, averages for the population is represented by mu and for that of the sample is represented by x bar. And similarly, standard deviation is represented by sigma for the population and so is variance which is nothing but sigma square and the sample standard deviation is represented by s and similarly the sample variance is represented by s square. This is something quite simple and straightforward. This is just a refresher. Uh, what is standard deviation? Standard deviation is nothing but deviation from the standard, right? And what is the standard? The standard we take as mean in general or the average. So we want to find out what is the average distance of every point in the data set from the average or the mean. That is essentially what standard deviation is all about. And variance is nothing but a square of standard deviation. The term that you see on the top, the summation of xi minus x bar, the whole square, represents nothing but the sum of squares. That is, you're taking the difference between every point and the average, and you're squaring that up. In the denominator is nothing but a process to normalize the data, to convert that into a ratio. So usually, the general practice is to use n for population and n minus 1 for sample. And why do we have n minus 1 for sample and why not n? And that is what we wish to understand today in this video. When we talk about the population variance, then we have capital N in the denominator which represents the population, the entire population. But unfortunately, the entire population is most often not known at all, right? If you know the entire population, why would you even want to sample the data? Why would you even be worried about sampling? So in real life, we don't know what the real population is and we don't know what does the population mean or what is the population standard deviation. So our idea is to draw estimates about the population by taking some samples and that is why we rely on some method of sampling and that's why we want to talk about estimates like sample variance or sample standard deviation or sample mean, whatever that be as the scenario is. The formula is actually similar for the sample variance. You would find this as a surprise. The standard deviation or the variance formula as you see on the screen is nothing but the difference of each value from the sample average divided by the sample size. By doing this formula, which is exactly similar to the one that you see on the top, only difference being that there you are using population mean and here you're using sample mean. There you're using population uh, size, the total population size, and here you're using only the sample size. By applying the same formula as you applied for the population for the sample, you would be able to compute what is the standard deviation for that sample alone. So let's say I have an infinite population, I drew uh, 100 samples from it, and if I apply this formula, I will be able to find out what is the standard deviation for those 100 samples alone. But that's not something that has high practical utility. You want to draw estimates about the population. So this formula, though is correct, has limited utility or application. If we want to draw estimates about the population from a sample data, we may have to then apply some approximation so that our sample data or a sample estimate represents the population. In doing so, just by applying this formula alone, what happens? it creates a bias. When you take averages, we don't end up with any bias. That's a different topic as to why we have only bias with variance or why not with averages. 
But when we take dispersion or variance, we end up with some kind of a bias. And what is bias? Bias is nothing but some kind of a difference between what you expect versus what you actually get. So some kind of an error. So you have an error when you do a computation. And we want to knock off that error. We want to remove that error or we want to at least minimize that error. And the formula for minimizing that error, that bias is what we see as n minus 1 in the denominator. So when we apply n minus 1 for the sample and compute the standard deviation or the variance as the case may be, that includes a correction factor also called as Basil's correction formula or collection correction factor. And what is this formula? It is nothing but n by n minus 1 that you see within the parenthesis right at the bottom. And the n on the top and the bottom numerator and denominator gets knocked off. So what you remind with is n minus 1 in the denominator. Now that is this is a scientific principle. It has been mathematically proven and sound scientific theories are prone multiple ways. So if you research on the internet, you would find a lot of different ways in which this error correction and this formula has been proven using different approaches, different methods, etc. And I don't want to get into this. This is not an academic pursuit. This is more of a practical pursuit because you as a person trying to apply the concept of standard deviation or variance when you collect some samples should know should I be using n minus 1 or n and in which circumstances should I use and why? If someone asks you a question, you should be in a position to justify and that's what we wish to talk about in the next few minutes using some empirical data. I call this the intuitive proof because there is data here and that allows you to judge for yourself what is correct and what is not. So I have uh, some sample data here. There is one single data set that I have. So first scenario, one data point, and I want to find out what is the mean for that data. So I'm finding the average, average for this first value, which is just one itself is one. I have applied the formula for variance here instead of using what Excel already has, just so that we are able to relate between whatever formula that I showed earlier and what you're seeing here. So I've computed the variance for uh, this particular sample of one single data without applying any correction to it. And what is the value that I get? Zero. Now, is zero a correct representation? You tell me. The variance in this data, is it zero? What does variance mean? Variance is nothing but a measure of dispersion. Only when you have more than one point, would you have any dispersion? Now, you have only one data point. So that data point itself becomes the average. So the variance also is naturally going to be zero. The sum of square is going to be zero as well. So in this case, it doesn't make sense to say that there is any variance at all or to say that variance is zero because really there is no variance. You have not been able to compute the variance. When you apply the corrected formula in which you have n minus one in the denominator, then you see that Excel is giving you an error because n minus one, that is one minus one becomes zero. So Excel throws out saying it is an infinite number. And I think this is more accurate than zero because to say that the process has no variation is incorrect. You could say that the variation is unknown because we don't have sufficient data to estimate it from the sample that's been provided to us. And uh, so, you must by now be clear that to compute variance or dispersion, as I mentioned earlier, at least two data points are needed. And thus, by using n minus one, in a way, it kind of uh, ensures that this prerequisite of having at least two data points is taken care because if it's less than two, automatically, it would not compute the variance. Now, you might ask me a question saying that why can't I apply the same logic to the population? Why should I not put n minus one in the denominator uh, of the variance when I compute for the population? Why do I put it only in the sample? If you have a population for which the sample size is just one, why would you at all even compute variance? Let's say I wish to measure the weight of uh, one particular uh, person who is appearing for or is uh, just competing in uh, a heavyweight championship is just one person. 
we just have one data point one value that we are going to record when he is just going to qualify for his uh, uh, entry into the competition at that point we just have one value so there is no estimate there is no question of sampling there is no question of variance and so sampling would not come into place and variance would not come into place the concept of variance etc comes into place only when we have more than one data when we have uh, a data set is when we talk about the variance so if the population is just one data point it's not relevant a uh, population has to be at least having more than one data point for it to be relevant and that is why we don't necessarily apply n minus one with the population okay now let's move on to scenario two i'm just expanding the same logic and adding one more data point and computing now the vary the mean for these two data points that you see here not very complex similarly i'm computing the variance for these two data points and i'm also computing the corrected variance where i'm taking n minus one in the denominator and now you see i've got the values and you see that the value for corrected variance cor variance that's the corrected variance with the corrected formula of n minus one is higher than the variance that you have computed without correction so if this population is unknown i've just drawn two samples from that population I find that the corrected variance is larger than what I would have estimated from just by taking a formula which does not have or which does not apply any correction to it. Now what happens if this sample size is large? If the sample size is quite large, which we are going to see in the next few minutes, then n minus 1 would uh, be would approximate to n because n is large let's say n is 1000 and then n minus 1 is uh, 999 and when you put both of them in the denominator the value that you compute would hardly be any different from each other so it doesn't really matter when it matters is when your sample size is small that is the correction is more relevant when your sample size is small small or uh, accurate or reasonable statistically sound sampling in such cases what we have found out is that the variance would increase why because the denominator now has n minus 1 instead of n different uh, ways of explaining this is available on the internet there are sound mathematical ways of explaining it where i would be able to throw formulas after formulae and explain that to you but that's not our pursuit now empirically can i prove what i am saying by empirical calculation they have proven that variance of the population is always higher than the variance of the sample drawn without any correction computed without any correction why just imagine you know you have two data points and you are computing the variance now obviously the third data point in any data set is is highly likely that it would be different from these two and would be lying somewhere else outside these two right so let's say the first data point um, was uh, let's say here in a continuum the second data point let's say it occurred here the likelihood that the uh, the uh, let's say the average would be somewhere in the middle there's a likelihood that the third data point falls here here or somewhere here of obviously there is a chance that it falls right in the middle but as you keep adding more and more data points that is as you keep increasing your sample size it's likely that your dispersion will increase till a certain threshold and after that it would stabilize why am i saying that let's just jump into real data and uh, see how that works i have some random data here i have around thousand data points here and uh, i've done exactly the same calculations now i'm using the formula of excel uh, let me zoom this a little bit for you and you see that i'm using the formula of uh, excel for variance which is var dot p which means it's computing the variance for the population where in the denominator it's not using n minus 1 but instead it's using n and that value is given here so this is a variance of the entire population now without applying any correction right that is i'm not going to take n minus 1 i'm going to take n alone in the denominator and i'm going to take 100 samples and find out what is the variance so i'm applying the same formula that i've applied for population because i don't want n minus 1 in the denominator but only 100 samples 
Next, I'm doing the same thing for 10 samples, then for five samples, then for just three samples. Now you see here that the variance in each of this case, while this is the expected variance, the population variance for us in this experiment is known. We want our values to be close to this. And you see that little by little, the variance value tends closer to that of the population. So the trick here is to see where is it the closest with least sample size and somewhere around 10, I see that it's 0 0.06 while the population is 0 0.08. So it's reasonable that you collect even 10 samples, you might be able to get closer or do a good estimation of the population variance. Now let's trick ourselves by applying the same formula with correction. Of course, for the population, there is no correction needed. So I will use only n in the denominator. But for the other four scenarios, I'm going to use a formula which is variance. This is var dot s, which means in the denominator, it's going to take n minus one. And you see here that in each of these scenario, the variance is slightly larger than what you got without correcting for uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, without making the correction, right? That's n minus one correction. So the variance is slightly larger. So in e, this is what I was talking about here by empir empirical calculations. It's always been proven that the variance of the population is always higher than the variance of the sample one. And also when you apply correction, you find that the variance is further increasing and getting closer to what we have to get. That is the estimates are getting better and better. Instead of 0.063, I'm getting 0.069, which is a better estimate and much closer to 0.081 uh, than 0 .08, uh, 0.063, right? Now uh, I'm going to plot this in a graph so that we can draw some conclusion. So I just taken this data and transposed it and got it into some format like this, same data here and I have put the sample size here and I've drawn a chart like this. Uh, what does this chart mean? In this chart, let me just minimize my screen a little bit. So if you see in this chart on the X axis, I have the sample size on the Y axis, I have the variance and I have two uh, lines, one in uh, orange color, which is uh, the variance with correction and blue, which is without correction. Let's start with the blue. You see that uh, as I keep drawing more and more samples, at a particular threshold, say somewhere around here, right? So the value of around 10 or so, or to be precise around uh, 100, it starts plateauing, right? I start attaining uh, a close estimate of my population's variance with just 100 samples. I don't need to draw thousands, uh, thousand, the entire population, but with just 100 samples, I'm able to attain a closer estimate of the population's variance and this is something that we will take in another video and talk about and prove this number using even our statistical sample size computation now let's move to the orange now orange is with correction interesting that you see that the orange line tends closer it gets a value of 0 0.07 as we saw earlier in our table it was 0 0.09 so uh, somewhere around uh, uh, sorry 0 0.0 six nine which is 0 0.07 so it comes closer to our target estimate or target value much faster so even instead of having 100 samples with mere 10 samples i will be able to draw a good estimate of my variance of the population with uh, applying the correction to the standard deviation formula so i have just now what i have done I have just proven what is obvious, right? I have just shown to you practically why applying a correction of n minus one on the denominator makes practical sense. Absolutely, this is not something that is path breaking or something that I have found out. This has been proven by many people using multiple formulas in the past. And I have just tried to illustrate that with some example here. And I hope this uh, will help you to get your, uh, to clear the air on when you should use n and n minus one in the denominator. Whenever you are drawing an estimate of the population, you should use n minus one for computing the standard deviation in the denominator. Uh, of course, for variance and square root that when you do a standard deviation computation. But if you want to draw estimates only about the sample itself, then you can use 
n and live with that and you don't need to use n minus 1. Uh, further, uh, I have also added another video where I explain to you what are the different formulas in Excel for variance and standard deviation. So if you look at, for example, standard deviation, Excel has uh, a variety of formula here. I have put together another video where I talk about when to use each of them, how they are different, etc. separately. Friends, with that, I want to wrap up this and I hope this uh, helped you a little bit to clarify uh, more about this uh, concept. Thank you.